Hello everyone and welcome to India Sports Biz Talks. Today we have with us Mr. Shaji Prabhakaran, author and thought leader with a proven track record in sports management. Having worked with FIFA, he holds a rich global experience in managing and implementing numerous football projects and programs in a highly challenging environment. Currently, he is the president of Delhi's Football Association, also known as Football Delhi, which is the governing body of football in the capital city. We'll be picking his brain on his role with the association and growth of football in India's capital city. Let's dive into it. I would love for you to tell us uh, your role as the president of Football Association of Delhi. What does a day-to-day look like for you uh, from both a micro and macro perspective? Yeah, it's a, you know, though it's an honorary position as a president, but it almost takes a lot of time, uh, you know, at all the levels because uh, it's almost going to be three years now. But when we took over, you know, I become the president, uh, we had, uh, you know, a lot of challenging uh, areas to deal with and still many of those challenges still remains but uh, whether it is a macro level micro level my involvement uh, is there you know uh, 100% because uh, we have to build capacity of the people we have to handle people and uh, you know whether to initiate a grassroots project or whether to see that is implemented well and uh, whether we are organizing the league in a way for all our divisions you know and the strategic side of course on the marketing side uh, on the communication side on the on the stakeholder management side on uh, you know and then we have all those meetings which are there so therefore you know from macro to micro level involvement is uh, quite high which is uh, uh, not the case uh, in uh, in say in a normal situation because there are you know structure in place where there are capacity in the system so right now we are in a very startup level if you link that to as a business uh, you know situation so we are at a startup situation and also at you know reviving a sick unit yeah so it's a it's a double uh, you know area to deal with both both are challenging areas yeah uh, you know when i have uh, come in we didn't had even a one single staff you know? then it took almost uh, uh, 6 7 years to you know find the budget to recruit staff yeah and uh, it's uh, and then I, I have to do all the you know commercial sales <laughs> in the association because we can't afford a full-time person uh, who is experienced enough to go and sell in the market. Therefore, uh, that takes a lot of time uh, because uh, without getting the funds, we can't really operate and do activities. And uh, uh, you know, it's a uh, challenging, but at the same time, uh, the good thing uh, you know is that we could engage more and more people. More people are coming uh, to. Uh, work for the association on a voluntary basis as well mm-hmm. and there are you know we have now nine full-time staff uh, which we you know when we look back we can't really imagine we can have that many staff as well uh, but uh, you know definitely pandemic has you know put a lot of uh, breaks in our whole uh, you know progression i would say but we'll definitely come back to you know uh, something what we have you know put as our strategic goals uh, which is definitely is been you know completely hampered because of pandemic but we are quite confident that we will achieve all that uh, in say 18 to 24 months what we have planned we were supposed to achieve by 2021 that we need to really push it to another one year i would say right no of course given the pandemic and how things have changed for all stakeholders it's a difficult situation, but it's it's very intriguing to learn how much that this how much the state association is putting into developing the sport for a state association for uh, the governing body a uh, federation. What are the key performance indicators that you are trying to achieve? See, uh, 
our performance indicators are you know what we have our own strategic goals yeah where we have to you know achieve certain goals by certain time because as i said we were in a, we are in a startup situation therefore we are setting in our own uh, you know goals uh, and standards but there are a lot of expectations yeah mm-hmm. but expectations uh, are there uh, because you know as an association uh, is supposed to function in a certain way and supposed to do activities in certain way are supposed to engage uh, the community and the stakeholders in a certain way so therefore the expectations are there but definitely uh, you know it is long way to meet those expectations yeah uh, but our kpis you know we need to set our grassroots right where there is a structure where there is you know openness in the system which is inclusive you know and uh, then uh, we have our clubs the stakeholders you know which are key and for them we need to have regular activities our leagues which are you know which is a four tier league which will uh, go to five tier league you know how we achieve that how we you know organize in a way whereby they get encouraged and the and the players get motivated to be part of our club and uh, you know and we keep improving uh, the facilities and whatever we try to do with the league so that's one of the very basics and then the women's football is one of our priority areas which is definitely we have given equal focus and we have initiated a league for the first time with uh, you know 14 teams and then we also have you know under 7 program tool under under 13 program and also under 17 program and the league we have started yeah which is a uh, you know which is not completely fulfilling uh, the entire pyramid right now but we will have to you know bridge certain gaps there because we are still not able to do you know a talent scouting developing them in a way they should be developed so there are gaps and then there is education part which is very key you know the coaches education referees education their development and and then uh, coming to you know futsal which we have also in initiated that is all because we want to do you know everything uh, in football whereby we can engage more children uh, more youth uh, and uh, and take football forward so therefore what we ourselves uh, you know have put certain standard to that where which is very challenging for us also to achieve but then we have put it very high so that we will continue to you know work hard to achieve that so we are in a self analysis self evaluation mode always but definitely the expectations are there which we are not able to meet right now because uh, you know we have started with certain challenges with a lot of uh, you know um, legacy uh, which are there uh, you know as a state association we used to function in a certain way yeah whether right or wrong i don't want to say on that but what we have to do you know that is very clear but personally if you ask me you know i am only satisfied 30% yeah because whatever goals i have set you know i am only achieved 30% right now which is far below my own standard now you are also marking your third anniversary as the president of the association before you took on this role what did you find were certain missing elements and you touched upon a few of them but what were those missing elements vis-a-vis other football centric cities like a goa or a kolkata well there were you know many gaps because of goa and bengal they are kind of an established football states they have a culture you know and uh, the engagement the local clubs are much bigger than uh, delhi and uh, delhi being the capital city i always knew we have more potential uh, and we can really you know improve things uh, and uh, when we started the you know what our uh, my personal goal was okay how we put up a structure how we put up an administration which is professional which is transparent yeah and how we can engage more and more uh, uh, you know youth and children and uh, build capacity in the system yeah and that were the goals uh, you know initial goals and when uh, and uh, and uh, other aspect is uh, you know, how we create more opportunities for women because that was completely missing part uh, which were though you know many girls were from delhi playing for the country but uh, the local opportunities were far far less 
and uh, that was very from very beginning we wanted to uh, initiate uh, you know competitions for uh, girls and uh, uh, initiate fairness in the system and equal opportunity and uh, i would say that we have you know done uh, certain things we have taken initiatives in all the areas but definitely this is a work in progress yeah because we can't really uh, change things fast because and the other key challenge was there were no resources in the uh, in, in the organization how we build you know key assets where and build uh, you know uh, properties which would uh, generate revenue for the organization and the other major challenge was also the infrastructure because uh, the association uh, didn't had any access to uh, playing pitches huh? and uh, stadiums so therefore this uh, were uh, you know very key, key challenging areas there but we could achieve some uh, you know progress in all these areas yeah but uh, it's long way to go because uh, it will take time and uh, where you know all the stakeholders have to be very proactive in everything vision is very clear the vision is to make delhi a, a you know a a model football state in india and uh, we are working towards that and to make that uh, all the stakeholders have to play an important role and we are trying to you know uh, bring everyone together to one platform so that they get educated they our capacity gets built and uh, we work as a team because it should not happen that okay i am there because certain things happening if i am not there you know it should not happen that uh, you know things are not happening then you know it has no point yeah? and uh, that is uh, the effort being made that uh, we create a structure and a system uh, which remains there yeah and which only improves going forward and that can only happen when we engage the stakeholder in the right way and we build the capacity in them and and also empower them in certain way whereby uh, you know they they uh, get uh, the motivation encouragement uh, to do their bit mm-hmm. absolutely what does the future of the game for the city look like uh, and of course for the country but specifically for delhi how uh, are those missing elements going to be fulfilled uh, you know using uh, or integrating technology or resources both from a development and a commercialized standpoint yes uh, it's a good question uh, uh, the technology is an integral part of uh, all the operation yeah it is uh, uh, sports cannot uh, stay away from it and we we have uh, witnessed we have experienced during pandemic uh, the sports have increasingly used technology to remain uh, you know connected to uh, their stakeholders uh, but uh, we uh in our organization we uh, made technology an integral part uh, uh, since 2018 uh, we have you know uh, uh, initiated a project called football connect uh, it is it is a stakeholder management system where uh, every player can register every referee can register every coach can register all the clubs can register and uh, we also you know give them a smart card and that system unfortunately you know has become live only uh, uh during the pandemic and uh, we we wanted to you know uh, use it you know in the in the uh, new season but unfortunately you know it is delayed now uh, but we will you know as soon as uh, we will activate it so that everyone can come into our platform and uh, we completely digitize our system so this is the process we started and uh, this is just the first step and where you know we want to bring in you know 360 degree football management aspect through technology mm-hmm. and we are taking assistance of global technology uh, companies uh, in creating those platforms and we are very blessed uh, that uh, you know companies like open trends from spain uh, like even uh, tech mahindra uh, is supporting us uh, in developing those technology platform for us and we would like to be an example uh, for other sports association not only for football but for all the sports association in india uh, how technology can become an integral part and uh, it has you know not only on the management aspect of football 
but on the technical aspect of football and on the whole operation of football yeah and going and we also going to you know sign some partner for a match analysis player analysis part also which will be done remotely so and uh, and then you know we also going to make it uh, e football an integral part of our operations yeah which we wanted to launch in january uh, but unfortunately we could not do because uh, uh, the partner whom we were discussing has taken you know bit uh, uh, back step uh, but now we have you know in active discussion with few partners where we will be launching our uh, e football activities also very soon uh, and uh, that way we see that we we can touch upon uh, everyone who is you know offline or online or on pitch you know uh, want to be part of football so we want to provide a 360 degree uh you know opportunities and without uh, uh, e football uh, that doesn't complete so we are you know thinking uh, all round uh, and uh, i'm sure you know we will uh, be able to successfully do that as well right um now the state association is a public body how crucial do you think it is uh, and how much integration is there with private entities in delhi trying to grow the game of football see uh, st- the associations are you know uh, the problem with our associations are being you know we, uh, historically uh, is been run in a very uh, what do you say uh, not integrated with uh, uh, you know say business houses you know or government uh, we kept away but my effort is how we integrate with everyone because we can't operate a football and do a, do a sincere and uh, you know what is a uh, impactful work unless until we join hands with corporate business houses industries and government and other uh, you know stakeholders like even the social organizations yeah and uh, our effort is that that we want to work closely with everyone and we are working closely with ngos like sequin uh, where we have launched under 13 program for girls uh, jointly and uh, that was a huge success and uh, you know likewise we were we want to do similar initiatives uh, you know uh, with other uh, ngos and other organizations as well and business houses definitely because uh, they have the resources and they can share resources in in some way or the other where we can provide value to them yeah and they see that uh, you know joining hand uh, is important because we are doing something good for the community uh, through football and uh, that is where the transparency is required and also uh, you know there is t- trust in the organization and the trust in the people uh, who are you know managing the organization which is very important so therefore how we you know want to uh, we practice a very transparent uh, operations uh, everything in our uh, you know uh, organization we want you know anyone who is funding us can walk in and you know check our accounts yeah so that way we are keeping it open so but but we haven't uh, we we are not successful i would say you know in communicating all that telling our stories uh, directly Uh, and that has a limitation uh, but whomever we are working i am sure you know they are experiencing that that we are working as transparent as possible whatever resources is coming uh, is only going towards uh, its objective for which the partnership has been you know done and uh, what uh, i won't say we are quite successful in joining hands with business houses or corporates as as much as we want because still we are at a you know a, 20% or 25% level of our potential uh, because the uh, the corporate and the brands sometimes they only want to associate with the top properties in sports yeah and we won't be able to give them that kind of an eyeball uh, where uh, you know the big properties can give them so that's a comparatively we are not there so, but what we are saying that we are uh, you know our projects are our eyeballs yeah and uh, that would be the value proposition 
uh, and that way you know the children and the youth and the girls and the community uh, will feel that what football is doing towards them yeah we won't be able to you know do an event with a bollywood star or a or a big star uh, to kind of propagate uh, you know and uh, you know spread the message because we don't have the resources and that means we need that much more resources with us so that way we have certain disadvantage as brand things because brand definitely if they are spending an x amount they want a y value of uh, that amount you know that investment but what uh, we are trying to do is you know a, a social uh, project yeah football for us is a social project it's not what we are trying to do is a brand promotion because we at the end we won't be able to engage uh, you know that many uh, you know say online or offline uh, you know crowd uh, into our activities but uh, what definitely we can create goodwill for the brand uh, we can create you know um, something which on long run will give them return and we are very fortunate that way you know many of the uh, you know entrepreneurs have come forward and supporting their own way voluntarily yeah uh, which is uh, which is great thing uh, though they are uh, their company is not putting money but you know they are doing something to help us mm-hmm. which is again good you know and you and as an as a as a president you know as a uh, you know key functionary of an association i have to be patient enough because uh, it cannot happen that what i believe what i think you know it, it i cannot really you know transfer that to anybody's mind and brain yeah and uh, we will have failures uh, and hey that's why the my strike rate is only 2% yeah if i if i meet 100% or 100 companies you know two will agree to do something uh, and uh, that is uh, that is what you know the time it takes and uh, you have to invest your personal time which is important because at the end you have taken a responsibility and uh, that is what i believe in a lot has been said about working at teams and leagues and the, those jobs seem more approachable but when it comes to the state associations or governing bodies what is it that aspirants should look for when applying to these associations and bodies and what is it that you personally look for when hiring for your team let's see uh, at the state level the opportunities for a full time uh, uh, is very very less very very few yeah as i said uh, you know two, two years back in delhi association there was no full time job yeah and there were no vacancies uh, and uh, we have opened up likewise few other states associations have uh, opening up which is a great thing so what you know my advice to everyone is uh, don't only you know rely on uh, your degrees and diplomas your masters yeah try to show what you have done you know outside that uh, with football which is very important you know most of the time uh, what you know many of them rely thinking oh i have done you know this master that master and this is my qualification see qualification is one but you have to show certain competency and also uh, need to understand uh, the level uh, at the state level because today you know everyone knows you know how you know the big clubs are functioning how the big sports organizations are functioning but the expectation of that uh you know should not be linked with the expectation at the state level you know it's a completely you know a very very different uh, uh, world at the state level uh, one need to struggle uh, one need to work at a you know minimum resources one should not think i am joining microsoft you know i'll have everything ready you know you just have to start you know uh, you know operating your uh, you know laptop or tab yeah and everything is touch no one thing to if one is hired for uh, you know certain uh, uh, job description but you will end up doing you know 500 things extra and and there is no comfort there is no comfort so one need to you know ready to struggle and that struggle will prepare you for life yeah 
and uh, i am uh, and if whatever i have achieved in life i have achieved through that you know uh, if you look for comfort uh, then you know one should not even try to come to a state level because you will not get see uh, the financially uh, the state won't be able to pay a market price yeah and the job wise also you won't have a you know like a system structured hr uh, you know kind of a scenario now uh, you will operate uh, if you are lucky then you will get somebody good to whom whom you are reporting yeah uh, in a way where you will be able to you know guided at a professional level but uh, sometime you know you will only work with an honorary person who is not you know a professional but he loves the game and uh, we can't expect them to you know behave and work at a very professional level because they are trying to spend their own personal time uh, to support and help football so they will react in a certain way and uh, which is you know many of the times uh, whoever joins uh, the association they find it very depressing sometimes because they uh, you know they don't get a corporate kind of a you know feedback uh, reactions and the experiences and they think oh you know this is not the place i want to work but one forgets that that's the reality yeah you can't really create you know you know a, you know a corporate world uh, where uh, that is not possible yeah it's because everything is you know you are stretching your resources and your capacity is not there you are trying to you know put you know make use of 1 uh, dollar spread it across yeah and uh, that's very challenging but one thing who will survive that environment they will only you know go to the top because if you are if you are prepared to take that hardship you know and one should do that and that's how you can you know always be uh, very practical in your approach even you know when you are uh, you know working at a top level you will always understand the problems and realities of the grassroots level at the bottom of the pyramid and many times in our sporting scenario that's a problem you know people sitting at the top and you know working at a different uh, uh, structure they really don't know uh, the exact constraints uh, of the sport at the at the grassroots level and they take decisions thinking you know they all have the same level of resources same ability same capacity and uh, you know same structure no Uh, so therefore we all need to be practical and my advice is you know take that role whatever one if you are getting yeah and and if you are getting you are lucky i would say and it is like a double mba if you can survive a year or six months there it is you know one mba to double mba <laughs> and that's the best uh, education you can have and and uh, and uh, you know it will prepare you for life and you will be successful very well said uh, i think that's a very real picture but a very important one to paint for everybody out there uh, so thank you for sharing such wise words with us well that brings me to the end of my questions uh, it was a pleasure to have you my pleasure ananya thank you and my best wishes to all your endeavors and uh, stay safe and stay active Thank you thank you absolutely wish you the same Thank you everybody for tuning in please don't be afraid to reach out and let me know what else and who else you want to listen to next Also if you did enjoy this interview please don't forget to subscribe and rate the podcast India Sports Biz Talks through your desired podcasting platform To end the podcast I'd like to leave you with a quote by Kamala Harris Dream with ambition lead with conviction and see yourself in a way others may not Thank you and until next time keep the jojo high